456 addicted gamblers play games, play children games to win the ultimate prize of over 45 billion South Korean won, or around 32 and a half million euros. While this show is very entertaining and it is on the worldwide top charts, it hints to the real debt crisis that is omnipresent for the Korean youth. A financial drama a lot of people got sucked into and from which there is no way out. What's up everyone, my name is Joris, welcome back to my finance channel. The new Netflix series Squid Game is extremely popular all around the world, with over 100 million viewers in the first month, breaking previous records of Bridgerton and Casa de Papel. The series is based on the current economical crisis in South Korea. It shows us the sad truth South Koreans are struggling with at the moment. A period in time where life continues to become more and more expensive and the income is stagnant. It looks like there is no way to fix this in the near future and it discourages the younger generation. The story of the series follows a handful of people with huge debt burdens. They try to find a way to win the money to pay off their debt. The desperation of the contestants to get out of debt is real and it will force people to do things they don't really want to do. Ever since the 1997 Asian financial crisis, the spending habits of South Koreans have changed drastically. Back then, in the months and years after the Asian crisis, the government encourages the people to spend lots of money to get the economy back on track. There were even tax breaks for credit card payments. This encouragement helped the economy, but it also shifted the spending habits of the inhabitants. Nowadays, over 40% of the South Korean gross domestic product is spending by credit cards. So much higher than, for example, the United States, which are notorious credit card spenders. They limit their credit card spending to 18% of the gross domestic product. South Korean credit card debt, student loans, car loans, home mortgages and other loans are growing a lot faster than household income. People are taking on more and more debt just to pay off original loans. The problem with the huge and increasing debt has multiple origins. For starters, it is very hard to find a job in South Korea. Around 11% of people aged 15 to 24 is unemployed, a much higher number than other countries like Mexico and the Czech Republic. Further, because of poor credit scores, banks reject a lot of people, giving them no access to loans for mortgages or to simply pay off their debt. And lastly, but definitely not least, the huge gambling addiction that is present in South Korea. Both ordinary gambling as well as online stock market trading. People lend money to feed their gambling and investing addictions in the hopes of getting a higher return on their investments or gambles than they would have been paying in interest. Having no job, not being able to get a loan from the banks and losing money left and right, it forces people to turn to private lenders and loan sharks who can ask up to 40% of interest on loaned capital. That is a crazy high number. The problem is definitely not new, but now it is getting out of control. In recent years, Korean household debt has risen sharply to over 100% of its gross domestic product, the highest in all of Asia. A debt to gross domestic product rate of 100% is not welcome, but it is not per se bad. A lot of European countries already are at the 100% mark and they are doing just fine. The problem lies where the debt is coming from. If 40% of the debt in South Korea comes from credit cards, then there is a serious issue. Credit card interest rates are high and default rates will rise if people continue to spend more and don't earn more, causing more and more problems. It is a slippery slope. Aside from that, South Korea's top 20% earners have a net worth of over 166 times of that of the bottom 20%. A huge difference in wealth that shows a clear difference between the top earners who work for major companies like LG and Samsung compared to the unemployed younger generation. The rising debt relative to income is made worse by the recent rise in interest rates. 
South Korea raised its interest rates recently from 0.5% to 0.75% and that is making the outstanding debt worse. On top of all that, the boom in housing prices in South Korea is making it impossible for the average Joe to buy a place to live. With an average property price of 629,000 euros and an average salary after taxes of 22,800 euros, it is an impossible feat to buy something. The numbers just don't add up. Renting is the only way to go. With an average wage of 1,900 euros per month and a rent price of one single bedroom apartment of 700 euros and higher, a lot of your monthly wages go directly towards housing. If we then only consider the bottom 50%, the income drops down to around 1,400 euros after taxes. If you then take off rent, food and other fixed costs, you're left with little to no savings. All these financial disadvantages cause a huge problem in South Korea. And this exact problem is the inspiration for the Squid Game series. People from all parts of life, highly educated people, people living in the streets, people coming from rich families or from poor families, everyone can get into financial trouble. And if they continue to make wrong decisions, the downward spiral will pull them down very fast. When you're in this particular situation, you are desperate. And this feeling is perfectly depicted in the series. People will do whatever it takes to get out of debt and get back to the life they once had. Even if it means they have to put their own lives on the line. But even if they win the game and win the huge prize, they will have to do something about their financial mindset. The prize money might be gone very soon if they don't plan ahead. A financial education is not a guarantee you won't get into any financial problems in the future, but it will definitely limit that chance. The same education will also teach you how to cope with a sudden windfall and will prevent you from making horrible mistakes in the future. Educating yourself won't magically solve your financial problems, but over time it will give you ample opportunities. Up until the point that you don't need to put everything on the line in order to get out of trouble. The Netflix series is a great wake-up call for a financial crisis that is happening right now throughout the whole world. The younger generation finds it increasingly harder to buy real estate or to invest for their retirement. We really need a global financial education. If the younger generation also starts getting into debt, they will never get out of it. And that will result in a completely lost generation. So do your own due diligence and don't get a loan if you are not completely sure you will be able to pay it back in the future. Don't live above your means and save a little bit more when you can. And most importantly, make sure you're always paying back your outstanding credit on credit cards. Be smart with your money. If you've liked this analysis of a TV series, please let me know in the comments below. I'm thinking of doing more of these videos in the future, so please let me know what you think. Don't forget to like the video for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to the channel if you have not done that already. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.